In this video, we let the user choose whether they want to create a normal distribution, a log normal distribution, or a binomial distribution by using VBA. According to your choice, we will get here, again, it's up to the user, some 100,000 random numbers. But they can change that to more or less, but I did 100,000 to make sure that we get a curve that is very close to a normal distribution. If you have fewer cases, it may vary more and more and more. Then we let VBA create some bins. Then we let VBA calculate the frequencies. We added one more cell to make sure that there are no numbers left. That last one is the garbage can. That should be zero, otherwise you overlook some. And then finally, we let VBA make this chart. How do we do that? VBA. Make sure that you have in VBA a module. I called it sub-simulation, and then I created a shortcut, Control-Shift-S, to run this one. We need a series of variables, because I'm going to give the user a choice whether they want to use an array or not. I declare a variable as an array with open close parentheses, and I declare it as a variant type, so it creates variance in there. Then we are going to, use the, to ask the user, do you want a normal, a log normal, or a binomial distribution? Then we let them determine how many numbers they want. Then we are saying there is a, a limit to all of this. If you have more than a million, we will stop this because we don't have enough rows. We clear everything on the sheet that is open. We delete the only chart object that is in there from the previous run. And then we are going to create formulas based on S choice. And I made it not case sensitive by using the UK function. If it's ND, then we ask what is the mean, what is the standard deviation, and we put in S formula, which is a string type variable. We put equals the following function, equals norm inverse. The first argument is the rand function, open close parentheses. Close your function for a moment, then find out what P1 was, that was the mean. Hook onto it a comma for the second argument, P2, and we close our function. Something similar is done for the log normal distribution. We use log normal inverse, rand function again, and finally the binomial inverse function. Be careful in this case, the argument should be a little bit reversed. First p2, comma, p1, and then the rand function. Case else, that's not a valid option. I would recommend that you do not loop through all the cells in a loop. That will take very long. There is a lot of overhead cost. So do not do that. Either use a range formula or an array in the background. We are going to set O range to cells 1,1 through n,1. So 100,000 or up to a million. Let the user choose whether they want to use a range formula or an array in the background. It doesn't really make a difference, but I just want to show you whatever way you prefer. Use the range formula in O range formula equals S formula. So that is a much faster one than using this one, for that does it cell after cell, so it has to go from cell to cell. Then we replace all the values in there, so the formula is going to be whatever the value that came out of that formula. So the, the things don't update all the time, for then it's hard to calculate frequencies. We can also store the simulation numbers in an array. The array has been declared, but not been set. Now we are going to set it with a redim statement. 
from i to from 1 to n or from n in the columns 1 to 1 so it has only one column in the second dimension then we select u case again if it's nd then we put in all the array elements and now we are going to really loop through them but arrays are very fast we use the worksheet function norms inverse if it's ln we use the log norm inverse otherwise we use the binorm inverse remember again you have to reverse the arguments then we place the array in column a a sheet has one million rows, that's why we set the max to a million. O range equals array. That's the shortest one you could ever dream of. Why is that so easy and so well possible? Because Excel is basically also a two-dimensional array. So we are storing the array in the array of the spreadsheet in that range. Then we calculate frequencies. I declared a few more variables. I could have done that way on top. I put in the first cell the word count in the second column. Then we put in a formula in the first column. Let me show you what I'm doing at this point. So I'm filling out this range. So I need that value, the first one and the last one and everything in between. So we do that as follows. We put in the first cell this calculation. It takes the minimum of A minus the module function on the minimum divided by 10 and give me the remainder. Then we put in the lower cell the max plus 10, so we want 10 values. Store in P min and P max the top and the bottom value then fill the other cells I won't explain the details of that formula I think they speak for itself then we set O range to the cells to the right of the bins with one extra one remember for the garbage can so we put an array in there based a formula array based on the frequency function. Frequency is an array function, so we have to use formula array. And it runs from second row in column three through the eleventh row in column three and take the address of that range. So those are the bins. And then we make the borders around it. That is just some cosmetic work make sure that all the cells the columns of it ought to fit and then we tell the user what the outcome is and then we create a chart De declare a variable of the chart type set o range to cells 1 3 those are the bins up to 11.4, those are the frequencies. Add a chart to the collection of chart. We don't want a legend probably, we want probably a line chart, whatever you choose. Set the source data of O chart to O range. Make sure that this is not a property, so don't put an equal sign, but you have to put the source as an argument immediately after the space. Plot by the columns probably. Make sure that the category axis has major grid lines if you want that. Okay. Then the location of that chart is as an object in the same sheet. In which sheet? Sheet 1 dot name. Make sure that you do the name of that one. Then chart objects. I, that is just trial and error. Where do you want that chart? I said the left 125 units, top 250. Does the sheet chart object have a title no and select cell a1 otherwise the focus is on that chart let's try it Control shift s let's decide on a normal distribution 100,000 numbers let's say the mean is 50 
standard deviation is 5. Uh, first we are going to do a range formula and then an array. It gives me the end result and then it creates the frequencies and the table. Let's do it again, this time with an array. I use the same settings. This time an array. And you will see it goes very fast. And it creates that. A log normal one. If you type it lowercase, no problem. We took care of that. And that's the result. And finally a binomial one. Control shift S. BI. I keep the default values. This time I'm going to do an array. And that is the distribution. You see it's a little more skewed because it's a binomial one. This was a lot at once. You probably need to know much more. You need to know more about distribution. So I wrote a book and a CD-ROM for scientists that has a lot of types of distribution, simulating distribution, samplings techniques. But you also need to know a little bit more about VBA. So I also developed a CD-ROM that goes into all the details of VBA. After using that one, you will be a pro with VBA in Excel. 2013 can also be used in 2010 and 2007. The same story about these two. You can find all of this at genesispc.com.